All right, so this is gonna be the first in a series of videos where I show you how to perform stock market prediction uh, using TensorFlow. Uh, this, in this first video, we're just gonna be going through showing you how to get the data, right? How to, you, we're gonna use Python, obviously. I'm gonna show you how to use a API to get the data, uh, to get the historical data to train the model with. Um, now this is actually going to be based off of something that I did create in real life for practical purposes and did actually use with some some success. Um, I don't, now I don't recommend using this. I don't recommend putting your money on this. This is just an educational tutorial. Um, but figured letting you know that I actually did create this for pa for practical use would make it a little more interesting because that is true. Um, now I only used it for specific stocks, and we'll get into the, some of the details of how to use it um, as we progress through the series. But this first part is gonna be about data collection. All right, so today I'm gonna to be showing you how to collect market data using this IEX trading API. Um, so I already wrote the script because actually this is something that I've actually used uh, practically. So I already had the script, so I want to make this video kind of quick. Um, so I'm just going to run through the script here with, with you real quick and just explain how it works. All right. So first thing you're going to need is you need to import this request um, module, Python Python module. So just use pip, pip install request, right? This will allow us to call the URL and return the JSON. Um, okay. So the next thing here is I just have some parameters. Um, output file name, right? This is the name of the file where we're going to save the data to. Years of data, the number of years we're going to get from the API. Days per year. This is just so I don't have to count for leap year or anything like that, right? So just for every year, I'm just going to get 250 days. So if we're doing two years, it's going to be 250. Two times 250 is 500 days, right? When it comes to this, if I miss a few days here or there, it doesn't really matter. Um, it's not going to affect the model, right? So, okay. So now here this request.get, okay? This is where we're making the call to the API to return the data. Now let's let's run through this real quick. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this URL here. This is, a, this is the API call. And I'm gonna paste this into a browser so you can see the results. So let's copy and then I will paste that into a browser. And here we go. These are the results here. So as you can see, Let's take a look at the URL first, okay? So this is the base URL, right? Everything up until the question mark, and then after the question mark, that's your parameters. So symbols equals NFLX, that's Netflix. Type, we want the chart. The range equals 2Y, we want two years. Last, we want a daily. Filter, right? So filter equals, this is what metrics do we want to return, right? We want the date, we want what the stock opened at, the high, the low, what the stock closed at, and what was the percentage change for that day, and then the dollar change for that day. Okay, so those are the metrics we're going to be returning. And as you can see in the window below here, you can see this is the response, right? So you have your date, and you have again the parameters that the metrics that we requested to get in re to get in response, right? Okay, so hopefully that's clear. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna throw that into a response object here, right? Now, I'm printing the response, the status code. What we want is we want a 200, right? 200 means it was a successful call to the API. If it fails, we're gonna raise this error, okay? So moving on, we're gonna throw the response of JSON into this data variable here. Now, the response is wrapped in a, in a this, well, let me show you, right? So in order to get the result, the daily results, it's wrapped it. We have to call, we have to extract this part of it, Netflix chart. Okay, so I'll show you. Let, let's look at the API call again, right? So here, see this first part, Netflix chart, right? JSON has a hierarchy to it, right? So all the responses, all the days that we want is, is wrapped up in this part here, this chart, um, chart object. Okay, that's all we're doing there, right? Number of days, we want to know how many days are in the data set, so we'll just get the length of the data set. Okay, now, all right, so those are just kind of like the, that's kind of like the setup here, right? That's the call, that's the parameters we're going to use. Now let's get into it. 
First thing we're going to do is we're going to write out our header record here. That's what this is doing. This is simply writing a header record to our text file. Now you'll notice we're writing percent change one, percent change two, percent change three. These are right, and it goes all the way up to percent change fourteen. Now these are for each record in our data set is going to represent fourteen days of the changes in the stock. Okay. And then the last column is going to be Y. That's our answer, right? That's the column we want to predict. That's the column we want to train our model to predict. Now let me explain why we have 14 days of history in each record. The reason is this. A neural network, right, if, if let's say you have 10 records in a neural network, right? And let's say, well, actually, let's say we had 14 records, right? And each record in a neural network represented this percent change on a particular day, right? Our neural network is not going to know if there's any course, any sequencing, right? If there's any relationship between each day, right? And as you know, if you've ever traded before, there is, right? But our neural network is not going to be able to pick up on that, right? Each record is its own thing, right? It doesn't matter if they're in a different order. It, that doesn't matter to our neural network, right? It doesn't know about what, what record it processed before or after. It has no idea about that, about sequencing. Now, if you're talking about a recurrent neural network, that's a little different. But we're just using a plain vanilla dense neural network here, a fully connected neural network. So in order to account for that, because I believe there is relevance to um, the sequence, the changes in a stock from day to day, and I believe the days are on some level connected, right? In order to account for that, each record is going to have, it's going to be a rolling 14 days. Okay? So that's that. So now... We have a loop where we're looping through for each, for all of our days, right? We're going to do 500 days, right? Days to include is 2 times 500. And we're going to throw our, our uh, 14 days into our variables here. And then here, what we're looking for, here's where we set Y. We set our output. Now, we're only trying to predict 0 or 1, right? So what does a 1 mean? What we're looking for is a percent change greater than or equal to 1%. That's what this is doing here. If on this particular day the stock rose by 1% or more, that to, me, to us indicates a buy or a successful um, or a one, right? And that's the column we want to predict. We want to be able to predict, is this stock going to rise by 1% or more on this particular day, on the next day, right? So creating our data set, we're going to look for that. And if it's greater than or equal to 1, we're going to set it to y equal to 1. Otherwise, it's 0. Lastly, we write this record out to the file. Decrement our counter here, our little index, number of days. And then we're done. So let's run this and see what we get. OK. We have our file, and as you can see, here's all our data. Percent change 1 to 14, and then our output column Y. All right, now the one thing I want to point out here quickly, just to show you that this is, a, in fact, a rolling 14 days, is let's pick a, a number here. So let's check out this negative 5.077 here. So now look at the next record up, right? See how it moves back? So now percent change two column, and then you go up again, it moves back to the percent change three column, right? So that shows you that eventually this negative 5.077, whatever day that was, that's eventually going to drop off, right? So it, so it is in fact a rolling 14 days where one day is always dropped, the days are always shifting, right? So eventually as the records go up, these one day drops off and the new day gets brought in, right? So it's a rolling 14 days. Um, so yeah, so hopefully that makes sense. All right, so that'll do it. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. And also check out jamestechtips.com for more BI-related content. And thanks for watching.